How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Gene Lockhart, welcoming you to the Schlitz Playhouse of Stars. In my life as an actor, I've played many characters. Some of them have been good men, some not so good, and some of them just plain bad. And inevitably, some of the bad ones landed in prison. The man I play this time is in a prison too, but a rather unusual one. Fireplace. Windows without bars. And even a guard, in a manner of speaking. The room's cold. Would it be asking too much to have some wood put on the fire? Well over 70 in here. Then why do I feel chilled? You're lying to me. You'd like to have me freeze to death. I'll put on another log. Oh, don't bother. It doesn't matter. Get out. Glad you come, sir. Where is he, Rogers? In there, as usual. Flanders, I told you I didn't want you to come here again. And I didn't particularly want to come, Rennell. Then why did you? Because of your obstinate refusal to see Dr. Rosslyn when he called this morning. Why should I want to see him? I'm not crazy. I don't need a psychiatrist. I didn't ask him to come. No, but your board of directors did. Ah, uh, that bunch of old women. I created them, every one of them. And now they have the presumption to tell me what to do. They're not telling you what to do. They're worried. And frankly, so am I. You haven't stirred out of this room for three weeks now. You eat here, sleep here, live here. Why, Ramel? That's my business, Doctor. But surely you must realize this isn't normal behavior. You're not well. Oh, so I'm not well. And last week you tried all your tricks on me and told me there was nothing the matter with me. Nothing physical, Ronell. Will you stop insinuating that there's something wrong with my mind? Well, now, what would you think if you were in my place? What would you think of a captain of industry, a world figure, physically as sound as a boy, who suddenly shuts himself up in one room of a 30-room house and refuses to move out of it? Tell me, Ronell, what would you think? Why don't you leave me alone? You come here and pester me. You think there's something wrong with me and you can't tell me what it is. So you pass the responsibility to this, this quack, this, this Rosalind. I tell you, kindness, I won't stand for it. Now get out, get out. Now get hold of yourself, Ramel. Now calm down. Oh, believe me, I'm sorry for you and I do want to help you. You can't help me. No one can. No, not if you persist in staying in this room day after day, re refusing to make any effort to get out. Effort? I've been trying. Trying harder than I ever have in my life to leave this room. Clanders, I can't. Well, why not, Ronell? Why not? I can't open those doors. The door? They won't open for me. It works easily enough. Not for me. You see, it's true. All doors open to Alfred Rennell except those he wants to open for himself. But if the door is open for you, you could go through it. Well, why not try to forget this fixation? Let Rogers open the door. You don't understand. I have to do it. I think you're making it hard on yourself. Relax. Walk away from the problem. I didn't get where I am by walking away from things. I tell you, until I can open that door, I'll not leave this room, even if I rot here. Oh, but that's ridiculous. You're only making the thing worse by concentrating on it like that. The thing, the thing. What is it? I thought you could help me. And you can't even give me a reason for this situation. Why should this happen to me? Well, it's probably only a temporary phenomenon. Don't hedge. Tell me the truth. Well, you must understand, Ronell, this sort of thing is out of my field. 
But I imagine that Dr. Rosslyn would tell you that you have a psychiatric block. What do you mean by that? That you have reasons for not wanting to go through those doors, so you can't. Now, there have been cases where a man was afraid of what he might hear over a telephone. So he was unable physically to lift the receiver. I'm not afraid of anything. No, you don't think you are. But fear is there in your subconscious. Now, this is nonsense. You've cut yourself off from all the warmth in people. You've directed this empire of yours as if it and all the human beings in it were machines. You've never really opened the door for anyone, have you, Renal? No. You've only closed them and kept them locked. This is absurd. All of it. I knew you didn't know what you were talking about. Now get out of here and leave me alone. You can't help me and neither can this other quack. I've got to do this thing for myself. As I've always done everything for myself. Yes, Renal. Maybe you're right. Maybe you will have to do it for yourself. Surely you're not going out now, sir. Don't you think you'd better wait until the storm lets up a bit? It is pretty bad, isn't it? I imagine Mr. Rennell would be glad to know that I've gone. Very difficult gentleman lately, sir. I don't imagine your job has been any better roses these past few weeks. Well, he's never been what you might call a very warm gentleman. Not much heart. But he was always fair. That's changed, has it? Yes, Doctor. You can't tell a thing about him now. One minute he's all right, and the next, well, he... He's a very sick man, Rogers. Yes, sir, I guess so. That's funny. Did Mr. Rennell say anything to you about expecting someone? No. broke down. We got caught in the storm. The baby. He's sick. He's got a fever, hasn't he, Mommy? Uh, may he's I? It's terribly hot. Uh, first of all, you'll have to get out of these wet things. Help them, will you, Roger? Yes, I will. Uh, all right, dear. Here. Here's something. Don't keep it back, honey. There, just give him to me, please. Thank you. All right, Rogers. Here, will you take these? Get me some warm blankets at once. But, Mr. Rennell, what was... Never mind, I'll take the responsibility. And have the cook make some broth, hot tea, anything, as long as it's piping hot. But cook has left. I haven't had a chance to tell you. All the help except me has left. Well, then make it yourself, ma'am. Come on. Yes, Dr. Clanders. Uh, are you a doctor? Yes. Uh, Mommy, he can make Kenny all well again. Will you all come in here? There's a fire. Oh, that's fine of you, doctor. These people are in trouble. Car broken down, storm, sick baby. How do they get through the gate? Well, what does it matter? Perhaps the electricity failed. It's a good thing. Get over here close to the fire now and thaw yourselves out. This is not a hotel. I said the baby is sick. He's sick too, isn't he? Have you got a fever like Kenny? Get away. I'm not sick. Joe, come here. Perhaps we better go, Doc. Stay right where you are. I don't propose to fill this house with strays blown off the road. We're not strays. What are strays, Mommy? Anyway, we're not, so they are. They need warmth, temporary shelter. That baby needs medical care immediately. I'll take them to another room where we can't possibly bother you. And as for any expense incurred, such as the cost of a pot of tea, I'll take care of it. I'd be glad to pay for everything. As soon as I get a job, we're fruit pickers. All right, all right. But get them out of this room. I want to rest. If you're warmed up a bit, we will go to another room. Mr. Rennell isn't well. Oh, good, Rogers. Now, if you'll find me a number, I'll, I'd like to get my bag out of the car. What are you doing here? I lost my storybook. And I want it. It's all right. It's only thunder. It can't hurt you. Your book's over there, underneath the table. What's that for, mister? What's what for? That 
gun. It isn't a gun, it's a pistol. You gonna kill somebody with it? Of course not, don't be silly. Why would I kill anybody? Don't, mister, you might hurt yourself. You better go now. I like to have somebody stay with me when I'm sick. My I'm not sick. The doctor said you are. The doctor's a fool. He is not. He's making Kenny well. I like him. He's nice. Well, I'm not nice. And I want to be alone. You most always are alone, I just guess. You better go back to your mother now. Golly, what a pretty dish. What's it for, mister? It isn't a dish. It's an ash tree. Look, it's all scratched up inside. Those aren't scratches. Those are my initials. It's so shiny. I never saw a dish so nice and shiny. I'll make you a trade for it, mister. I got some marbles. Don't be silly. What would I want with your marbles? Have you got some of your own? No, of course I haven't. And I don't need any. I don't need anything you have. I guess you don't. I guess you've got just about everything in the world. I'm to get out of here this minute. What's the matter, mister? Is it stuck? Yes, it's stuck. Why, it wasn't stuck at all, mister. Go, go, go. My storybook. I want you out of this room now. we hear a great deal about taste tests. But here's one that's really conclusive. It has to do with beer. I'm talking about the fact that year after year, people buy more Schlitz than any other beer. This is the result of trial and comparison of different brands to find the one beer that best meets the modern taste. It's a continuing taste test that goes on day after day, year after year. Here's a lady who might very well be your neighbor. She has just decided to take Schlitz home. The reason, of course, is that her family likes Schlitz best. And it stands to reason that they have tasted other brands in the process of settling on Schlitz as their first choice. Here's a familiar family scene where lots of products are judged and where the American people make their choice. All beers look good in the glass, but this is Schlitz beer, and it's different. Dry and mellow to meet the modern taste brewed with just the kiss of the hops to give you all of the flavor and none of the bitterness. Good? You bet. It's the beer that made Milwaukee famous. How about making the one taste test that counts most? Yours. Just one glass will prove to you why year after year people are buying more bottles and cans of Schlitz, millions more than any other beer. If you like beer, you'll love Schlitz. And now, back to the Schlitz Playhouse of Stars. There's no powder burns, no shell fragments that I can determine. No retinal damage. Then why can't I see? I don't want mumbo-jumbo. I want to see. It must be shock. I'm positive, Renell. It's just an extension of your traumatic condition. Now, perhaps you'll be willing to see Dr. Rosslyn. Yes. Yes, get him. Right away. Put in the call form, will you, Rogers? Southgate 4663. Yes, sir. What's this dramatic? Get that child out of here. All right, Joe. How long do you intend to keep those people in this house? 
Until the weather clears, then they'll be only too happy to leave. The south gate number doesn't answer, sir. It's got to answer. He's got to come right away. You're probably dialing the wrong number, you stupid fool. Keep trying, will you, Rogers? Yes, sir. Now look, Rennell. Even if we reach Rossland, it may be morning before he can get here. The storm is getting worse all the time. Meanwhile, you must relax. And there must be no further strain on your eyes. I'm going to put a light bandage around here so that you'll have to keep them shut. There. Oh. Now I want you to lie down and get some rest. Rest. Relax. How can a man rest who's suddenly gone blind? I'm going to give you a mild sedative. Here you are. Some water. I'll send Rogers in with some hot tea. He'll help you get into bed. Meanwhile, I'll try to reach Rosslyn myself. Who is it? It's me, Mr. Rennell. Me? Who's me? Mrs. Leonard, sir. The one with the sick baby. Uh. I want to tell you how sorry I am that this happened to you. I thought perhaps I could do something to help you. You certainly can, Mrs. Leonard. You can keep that child out of this room. She slipped away from us. Well, I put her to bed now. I hope she wasn't a bother. She's a meddlesome, inquisitive child with absolutely no sense of propriety. We think differently, Mr. Rennell. As soon as the storm lets up, we'll go. I'm sorry we had to trouble you at all. Good night. Uh, uh, Mrs. Leonard? Yes? How... how's the baby? Better already. His fever's dropping. Are you sure I can't do anything for you, Mr. Rennell? No. No, thank you. I have my man. He's well paid for what little he does. Good night, Mr. Rennell. Good night. Your tea, sir? Hang it, old man! Sneaking up on me like that? Everyone pussyfooting around? Dr. Clanders told me to bring your tea and help you to bed. I don't want any tea, and I don't want to go to bed. And if you don't keep these strangers out of this house, I... No danger of that. I'm leaving in the morning, sir. As soon as the Employment Bureau can get another man here to take my place. What's that? I'm giving notice, sir. What? Why, this is nonsense, Roger. You, you've been with me for 15 years. You can't do this. You're not well, sir, and I'm sorry to do this. But I don't feel that I can stay on here where my services aren't appreciated. But, Roger... Rogers! Rogers, come back! trying to drive me mad. I just came back from my storybook, mister. Oh, it's you again. Help me to my chair. Now will you tell me what does dramatic mean, mister? Your mother told me she'd put you to bed. But I didn't stay there. I wanted my book. You've got lots of books. But I only got this one. And seven marbles. One of them's chip, but it's a real pretty color. A lot of good my books do me now. You want I should read your mind? It's Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Yes, that's just what I need. A fairy story. Of course, this one isn't very good, mister, but it's better than not any story. Don't be silly. Take your book and go. I'm a sick man. All right, mister. Wait a minute. Why do you say it isn't a very good story? Don't children like any fairy story? 
three bowls of porridge for her to eat out of. One great big bowl, one medium-sized bowl, and one teeny-weeny bowl. But it's a fairy story. It sure is. Good night, mister. Uh, did Rogers feed you? Yeah, tonight. Why, didn't he feed you? I, I wasn't hungry. You got some tea there. Tea's good for you when you're sick. I don't want any. When you're sick, you drink tea, if you got it. And you go to bed and your mommy reads you stories. Didn't she? Hmm? Didn't your mommy read you stories when you had the stomach ache? No. Well, anyhow, you gonna drink your tea or do you want me to go away and leave you alone? Uh, no, please. I'll take the tea. Without sugar. You don't even know what's good. Sort of. Mm -hmm. Make a laugh if you want to hear this old story. No. And there on the table were three bowls of porridge. One great big bowl, one medium-sized bowl, and one teeny-weeny bowl. See what I mean, mister? Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, Three bears lived in a cottage in the deep woods. There was a great big father bear, Mister. It's all right, Ronell. It's me, Clanders. Oh. We want to see how you are this morning. Now, when I remove the bandage, I want you to look down at the floor first. And gradually open your eyes as you come up. I can see, Clanders. I can see. Yes, it was simple psychosomatic shock. That pistol shot gave your subconscious the excuse it needed to black you out. Yeah. Tied in with your inability to open those doors. The little girl, Joe. She was on my lap. The Leonard child? They've gone. Oh. They left over an hour ago. Awfully nice little child. She took very good care of you. But it must be a relief to you. That's what you wanted, to have them out of the house. Yes, uh, yeah, yes, of, of course, that's, that's what I wanted. Oh, Rogers. You, you're staying until they send another man. Yes, sir. I brought your breakfast. Thank you, Rogers. That's very thoughtful of you. Try to eat something. Dr. Rawson should be here soon. You said no one could really help me but myself. Well, yes, but... May I see you, sir? Oh, what is it, Rogers? Is Dr. Rawson here? The Leonards are back. The Leonards? Joe? Well, bring them in, man. What are you waiting for?
Joe has something for you. That's why we came back. Oh, your eyes are better. I'm so glad. Yes, Mrs. Leonard, I can see. Quite clearly. Thank you, Joe, for reading to me and for putting the rug over me. I... I... She wants to say she took it without asking. We turned back when we discovered it. I'm sorry, Mr. Rennell. She's never done anything like this before. Uh, Mrs. Leonard, uh, there's some mistake. Joe didn't take this. But she was too upset and confused to explain to you. You see, we'd made a trade. She was to give me some of her marbles. I, I haven't played for a long time. Too long. But you hurried her away, and she was probably too sleepy to. And she forgot to leave them. Isn't that how it was, Joe? No. No, I didn't forget the marbles. But you said you didn't want them. You said you didn't need anything I had. But, Joe... The... And I wanted the dish so bad. We never had a dish so shiny. But I was going to put it back this morning. I did steal it, Mommy. Mister's just being nice to us. But he won't like me anymore. And he won't want me to go here anymore. <laughs> but, Joe... Joe, wait! Joe, I'll always like you. Joe, I'll always want you here, child. Like beer, you love Schlitz. And here once again is the star of tonight's Schlitz Playhouse of Stars. Well, you see, ladies and gentlemen, Rennell was just as securely in prison as if he'd been behind bars. But when he opened his heart, he opened more doors for himself than just that one in his library. I'm Gene Lockhart, saying goodbye now for Schlitz Playhouse of Stars, which will be back to entertain you the next week, same time, same station. bitterness in Schlitz, so dry and mellow, it's the tops, brewed with just the kiss of the hops. If you like beer, you love Schlitz, if you like beer, you love Schlitz, so order Schlitz today. If you like beer, you'll love Schlitz.